Hello friends, subscribers and new viewers of this channel. In this tutorial we explain how to install and run Linux Ubuntu on Windows by using Docker containers. Motivation. If you are a developer or a software engineer testing programs in Linux and Ubuntu, you would often need to switch between these two operating systems in order to test different aspects and behavior of your program. This is especially the case for Robot Operating System or ROS developers. Consequently, it's a good idea to have Linux Ubuntu installation inside of a Windows environment so you can quickly switch between these two operating systems and you can test your program. There are several approaches for running Linux Ubuntu on Windows machines. Number one, we can use virtual machines. Number two, we can use Windows subsystem for Linux or WSL. And we covered WSL in our previous tutorials. Number three, we can use Docker and pull a Linux Ubuntu distribution or an image from the official repository given over here. It is good to know and to test all of these three options. In this tutorial, we will cover the option number three. This might not be the most optimal or the fastest solution, however, it's good for testing and learning different aspects of Linux Ubuntu. Furthermore, by installing Linux Ubuntu through a Docker container, you will have a really minimal Linux Ubuntu distribution and you can really build your own container, install compilers and do everything within this constrained framework. In this tutorial, we explain how to number one, download or pull Linux Ubuntu image from the official Docker repository. Number two, start a Linux Ubuntu container from the Linux Ubuntu image. Number three, test the container by executing some bash commands and by installing nano and C++ compiler. And number four, compile and run a simple program inside of Docker Linux container. So let's immediately start. The first step is to install Docker Desktop such that you can use Docker on Windows. I created a separate video tutorial explaining how to install Docker on Windows. And here is the tutorial. I will provide a link to this tutorial in the description below. Alternatively, you can go to the official Docker website and you can follow the instructions in order to install Docker Desktop on Windows. After you do that, you have to make sure that Docker is properly installed. To check the Docker installation, click over here and search for command prompt. And inside of this command prompt, you need to execute this command, docker version. And if you see this, this means that Docker is properly installed. And you can continue watching this video tutorial. The installation of Docker on Windows might take even 10 minutes and you have to make several steps and you have to do several verifications. So my advice is to watch the video tutorial. Our plan is to download an image of Linux Ubuntu. And if you go to this website, you can see all the available images. That is the images corresponding to different Linux Ubuntu versions. You, you can see over here Ubuntu 20.04, that is Ubuntu Focal. Then you can see 22.04, that is Ubuntu Jammy. And you can see Ubuntu 24.04, that is Ubuntu Noble. And the command for downloading, or better to say for pulling, the corresponding Ubuntu version is this one. And in addition to this, you need to add the version. Okay, in this tutorial, we will pull this version of Linux Ubuntu. And everything that I will explain in the sequel can be generalized to other versions of Linux Ubuntu. We need to execute this command where this version should be replaced with the corresponding Linux distribution. So let's write this, docker pull Ubuntu, and then we will specify the ver version jammy. And let's see what will happen. Bang pulling and here it is. 
Next, let's make sure that the correct version of Linux Ubuntu is being downloaded. To do that, type docker images to list all the images on our system. And over here we can see Ubuntu, Jammy, we can see the image ID, we can see when it's being created, and we can see the size. Notice over here that the size is less than 100 megabytes, and this is super small. Next, let's learn how to create and run a container from our image. To do that, we need to run this docker, then run, then we need to specify the name of the container. I will call it operating system one. Then I need to specify this option and I need to specify the name of the image. The name of the image is Ubuntu. And then over here, you need to specify Jammy and you need to specify that we are running bash and magic will happen now. Bang. Look what happened over here. We are not anymore inside of the Windows command prompt or inside of the Windows terminal. We are right now inside of our Linux Ubuntu 22.04. That is, this is the bash terminal or bash shell. Now, to verify this, we can simply type ls la and we can execute all Linux commands, as you can see over here. This is our root. Then we have our home. Let's go to home. And you can see over here dot profile and dot bash rc files. And this is super nice. Okay, let's perform now several tests to make sure that our container is working properly. That is that our Linux Ubuntu distribution is working properly. First of all, let's install an editor such that we can edit files. Before you install anything inside of this container, it's strongly suggested to run sudo apt, or actually be careful here, you don't have sudo here, you just need to write apt get and then update, and this will update everything. And after that, let's install nano. Nano is a lightweight editor for editing files. So let's write apt get install and let's type nano and here it is perfect let us now create a test folder let this test folder be inside of our home so i will create test one perfect let's see does it work works like a charm here it is so let's navigate to test one here it is and let's create a file for example nano readme.txt and here it is this is a readme.txt file of my test nothing special is explained in this file okay if you're not used to nano you need to know several things about using it first of all to save the file, you need to press Ctrl and then you need to press O to write out. And you need to specify file name to write. You will specify readme.txt and press Enter. Over here, you also have some other options that you can explore. However, for the time being, let's exit. To press exit, press and hold Ctrl and X. But let me now again repeat everything. To save the file, press and hold Control and press O and press Enter and to exit Control and X. Over here you can also see the instructions. And now let's see our file. And let's display the content of this file by using cat. And here it is. Okay, we created our first file and so far everything works perfectly. The next step is to install C++ compiler. To do that, we need to execute this command. This command will build, or actually will install, build essential packages that contain all the compilers and everything you need to have to compile C++ files. So let's run this. 
and be patient over here. Press yes, and here it is. Be patient, this will take some time. Since this is, I think, around 300 megabytes. Good. Let's make sure that C++ compiler is installed. To do that, type G++ and then do this version. And let's see the output. We can see this copyright 2021 Free Software Foundation. You can see the version of G++ and that's perfect. Good. Next, let's compile our first C++ file. To compile our C++ file, we need to create the source file. I will call the source file as program1.ctp. Consequently, type here nano program1.cpp. And over here, let's enter our first C++ file. So let's type include input output stream. Then let's do this using namespace std then let's put our int main function here it is let's return zero and let's print out a message my first program inside of the linux ubuntu docker container and let's end the line. And that's it. Okay, let's save this file. Now, to save the file, you can also press Control S and this will write the lines or you can do again Control O and save it. Now exit the file and let's see our files. We have two files over here and Let's do the following. First of all, let's display our CPP. Here it is. Then, before you can actually compile or execute this file, you need to set the permission rights. To set the permission rights, you need to do this. First of all, locate your file and then type chmod plus x program 1.cpp. Just put it like this, just in case. Although this might not be necessary for the source files, I still like to do that. Okay, the next step is to compile this file. To compile this file, we need to run this command. Here it is. We are calling our compiler, G++. We specify this option, wall. We specify an additional compiler option, W. And these are this third option, W, error is also a compiler option and over here we specify the source file it's program one cpp then we specify the output or the executable file it's called program one executable so let's run this and no error let's make sure that everything is being executed here it is program one executable and you can see that program one executable already has it's already green, which means that it can be executed and executable rights are over here. However, I still like to add manually the executable rights. So I will type this again, just to make sure. And then finally, let's execute this file. To execute this file, we simply need to write this command and let's see the output. Here it is, my first program inside of the Linux Ubuntu Docker container. And that's it. Next, let's learn how to exit from our container. To do that, simply type exit. However, over here, let's list all the containers that are currently on our system. To do that, you need to type Docker, then the option PS. Or actually, I made an error, it should be just Docker PS. However, over here, you will not see anything. To see the list of all the containers, including the containers that are being stopped, you need to do this. And if you go now all the way up, you will see that there is this container over here that's being stopped. 
A good strategy once you perform tests is to clean everything. Consequently, it's a good idea to erase this container. To erase the container, type docker rm and the name of the container. And this will erase the container. And if you now run this, we can see that this container doesn't exist anymore. Also, a good strategy is to erase the image if you're not using it. To list all the image images, type this, and let's erase this image. To erase the image, you need to type this docker image, then rm, then this option to force erase, and then type this Ubuntu, and then the version. And let's execute this, and let's see what will happen. Here it is, untagged, Ubuntu Jammy, and deleted. Let's now, again, list all the images, and nothing is there. Everything is cleaned. Okay, that's all for today, and thanks for watching.